Hey, how you doing? You're welcome to another time here, another time in the Hopper Room, another time to pray. Thanks for keeping the time with me. Thanks for keeping uh oh thanks for being here. Thanks for Zeta. I see you logged in on YouTube. Thanks. Thanks for logging on. Thanks for connecting here. Uh, we get to do this Mondays to Fridays, and uh, we just do a prayer meeting, pray in the Holy Ghost. And for those who cannot, you know, you're free to pray whichever way you want to pray. It's just uh, an avenue which just opened up for people to pray. And if you need any encouragement to pray, that's the whole reason why we do this. You know, you can just join with us and, you know, if seeing other people praying, we'll encourage you to pray. Yeah, come log on with us. We got to do this at noon, uh, West African time. Uh, every weekday, Mondays, Mondays to Fridays, you know, and uh, we do this for six weeks and take a seventh week off as a sabbatical just to rejuvenate and, uh, you know, get our focus right, be sure we're doing the right thing, <laughs> you know, sure we're hearing from God. And we're not too absorbed in the in the praying itself that we're not hearing God, you know. So feel free. Uh, I'm happy to see you, Zeta. Uh, connecting with us on YouTube and every other one person that gets to connect with us, feel free come along and let's pray together. And uh, what we typically do is we, we we do we've been doing a study through the Book of Daniel since last year, just to give yourself a, a kind of a word charge, you know, as we go into the place of prayer, you know, to 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 uh, encourage ourselves in the Word. Obviously, we know prayer is not just our words is our communication with God and our communication, our work with God is guided by his word. His word is his constitution. His word is a foundation of our relationship with him and everything we do in our work with God has to be based on this word. You know, when the church first started, they would call the people that belongs to the way, the way, you know, the church is not just, anything it's the way jesus christ says i am the way the truth and the life and no one comes into the father but by me right so the way is determined by what the word says is the parameter of our relationship our work with god we don't just do anything as we come into a place of christianity or praying you know it's all guided you know by the word of god the bible says that um Christ is the foundation, right? It's the foundation of our work with God. And anything that we do, we cannot relay that foundation. It has to be built on Christ as a foundation. It has to be built on the word as a foundation, you know. And that's what God was talking to Joshua. He says, Hey, do not let this word of the Lord depart, you know. Let don't let it get away from you. Meditate on it, stay on it so that he can direct your ways, so that he can guide your way, so he can keep you on the straight and narrow path. You don't just stray away because I'm only bound by my covenant. I'm bound by my word. It, God says I have, he has exalted his word above all of his names, right? God is covenanted to us by reason of his word. So for us to get the best and the right um to, uh, the right part of God or, or to hold God as it were to a corner or to rightly relate with God or to become a friend of God we have to approach God by his word because that's the only thing he binds himself by he's not a sentimental God he's not a seemingly nice God he is a good God <laughs> you know he is a good God there's no way you find in scripture the Bible says a nice God it's not a nice God <laughs> it's not about niceness it's about goodness. He's a good God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from him, right? And that's where the whole testament, you see them when they go to war and they start singing, for the Lord is good and his mercy is endure it forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy is endure it forever. That goodness is defined by the word. And that's why we spend time to share from the word you know before we go into praying and even after praying we share from the word because the word needs to guide our prayer otherwise we're praying i miss it's 12 o'clock let's go ahead and pray in the name of jesus 
Amen, 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 amen. Thanks, my sister. Thanks for coming along. And I have probably Zeta on, on YouTube and probably my wife also. Uh, but thanks, thanks. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining along. And um, thanks for praying. Um, yeah. We continue looking at the excellent spirit, right? Looking at the life of Abraham. In chapter 14, we see that the kings that Abraham rescued their property and their people were offering Abraham to have all the loot. Abraham said, no, I've raised my hands to God and I won't take any of this things lest tomorrow you people would boast about it, right? But irrespective of whether they boast about it or not, Abraham had the opportunity to have everything, right? The method that he had sworn to God and was not carried away by the wealth that he, he had the opportunity to take was the fact that he was content. He was in a place of rest in God, right? Unless we come to a place of rest in God, we cannot exhibit an excellent spirit, right? A place of anxiety is a place where devil bears rule over you, where hell bears rule over you. Excellent spirit cannot come from such a life. Because when you are when you are when you are, when you have not come on to find your place of rest in God, the devil can use you. The devil can confuse you. The devil can turn your world upside down such that God might be handicapped in helping you. Right? That's what well, I believe that's first Timothy uh, 6 6, where Paul was writing. He said, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness, contentment stabilizes your, your godliness. Without contentment, your godliness is in jeopardy because you can, for one reason or the other, miss it because of lack of contentment. Contentment is that place of peace, that place of rest. It's a judgment. It's a place whereby you, you put things in perspective, right? You're neither lost in the past, nor are you carried away by the future. You are in the present, ever present, and know and being confident of who you are and whose you are. That is a place of contentment. It doesn't mean that you have everything that you need. It just means that you are you, you are comfortable with what you have. It's not a place of settling where you say, oh, all right, I'm not going to desire anymore. No. Set, contentment is just accepting where you are on the way to where you want to be. It's not where you are. This is where we are. So this is so far the Lord has helped us. So let's rest. That is not contentment. Contentment doesn't mean you don't desire for more. Contentment doesn't mean you don't want more. But you don't allow what you want to control you. You don't allow what you missed to control you. You, 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 you find your place in where you are. You, you, you see yourself above what you have or what you don't have. You, you, are, you are confident under your own skin. That is contentment. And unless you are that, God cannot use you. The Holy Spirit cannot, have, cannot communicate with you or use you. Right? Because you are not going to hear your voice anyway. Right? So God wants us to come to a place of contentment to guide, to garrison our godliness. You know, so we we'll read in Philippians chapter four. The Bible says that uh, that that um, the ashes for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made unto God. And it says, and the peace of God will guarantee your heart. The, the peace of God will give you contentment. The peace of peace of God will give you rest where you are. That is the reason why we pray. That's the antidote to, uh, to, to anxiety. It's getting that peace that will hold you stable. You know that even though I am where I am, this is not the end of my story. God is taking me somewhere. But while he's yet walking it out, I will not fall outside of his hands. I will rest in him because I am, I am, I am persuaded that he that has my case in his hands 
has everything covered. It will not be too late. It will not be too early. But I will get what I need as that when I need it, I will not miss out in anything. It's working behind the scene on my behalf. It's covering all the bases concerning me. I'm not missing out. He, he has me covered. And he, he has all the power to make everything that I want possible. Unless you have that judgment in your life, you cannot exhibit the spirit of excellence. You cannot show forth the glory that God wants to walk out in us. You know, may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anything on what, my sister? So it's the beauty. It is well. It is well. <laughs> it's all good. Man. Yeah. Bless. Amen. God will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. God Amen. bless you. you. See you tomorrow. More, more anointing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank all you, right, man. Same sir. here. Same here. Bless. All yes, right. Sir. God bless.